Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting. During this series of shows, we are talking about health and fasting and various elements that may help our community uh, deal with the fasts and things that may be useful for us to consider. In this episode, we're going to talk about the huge benefit of Ramadan in helping us deal with addictions. And we'll also talk about very briefly uh, taking medications during fasting. So Ramadan is a time where we are advised not just to abstain from food during the period of dawn to dusk, but also to avoid many vices. So for example, swearing, backbiting, talking ill of others, all of these things are advised for us to refrain from. Now, obviously, we should try and refrain from these at all times because they are not good habits to indulge in. But particularly during the month of Ramadan, we're given this golden opportunity to try and uh, control our temper, control bad thoughts about others, and think about how we can be kind and considerate to others. So in regard to that, in terms of health, one of the big things that obviously people will be doing during fasting is not smoking. So this is a golden opportunity for any of our community who are smokers to think about the, their habit and think about how they might be able to address this. So often when we talk about smoking and stopping smoking, there are some tips and techniques that are useful that we often advise patients about. So what we might say to a patient who is considering smoking is put on a piece of paper the pros and cons of smoking. So all the things that you enjoy about smoking and all the things that you don't enjoy about smoking and then put on another piece of paper all the factors that you want to consider that will help you stop smoking and all the things that you think, well, no, I don't want to stop smoking. So this is a way that we use in terms of trying to encourage patients to think about smoking and how to consider stopping. So this will be something that will be worthwhile for uh, people to think about during the month of fasting because from dawn to dusk, there is no way for anyone to smoke. And in, in the summer months in the UK, this will be a period of 18 to 19 hours, so you will almost be not smoking for a full day. Also, another useful technique that we advise patients about is when they're considering stopping smoking, is to think about what, setting what we call a quit date. So, in terms of preparing yourself psychologically to stop smoking, irrespective of the period of fasting, a useful technique that has been shown to be very beneficial and very effective is setting a date on the calendar. So marking the 1st of March, this is the day I'm going to stop smoking. And leading up to that time, what we often suggest to patients is, okay, how much do you smoke? And, and then if you want to stop by the 1st of March, <clears throat> how will you try and address that? So gradually cutting down towards the stopping date. So that say if someone smokes 20 to 30 a day, before that, before the 1st of March arrives, they'll cut down to maybe 15, 10, 5, so that they gradually decrease the amount of cigarettes. So when it comes to the stopping day, then they're much more able to try and stop effectively. So why don't we use the 1st of Ramadan as our stop date? Set that date on your calendar and say, by the 1st of Ramadan, I will stop smoking. And prior to that, in the preceding two, three, four weeks, slowly cut down the amount of cigarettes that you smoke. So if you smoke 20 a day, try and cut down to maybe 17, then 15, then 5, so that by the time the first of Ramadan comes, you can think, okay, I can just stop. <clears throat> now, some people like to do what's called cold turkey, which is just stopping straight away. Now, that may be useful for some, but generally speaking, in terms of addiction and behavior of that type, it's not that effective. But if you feel that you are able to do that, then again, that's something you can do. Set the first of Ramadan as your quit date and say, okay, on this day, I'm going to stop smoking entirely and use that, the beginning of that month, as the incentive for me to try and do that. Now, it's good that we try and set these times and these targets, but often what we find is when people stop smoking, they have what's called a relapse. So they will then start smoking after a period of time. This is perfectly normal, and we see this in the majority of patients who try and stop smoking. 
It's not something to get disheartened about. It's not something you should be disappointed about. It is perfectly normal in what we call addiction behavior. So often people find that they don't manage to quit or that they quit and they start again after a period of time. Don't let that worry you. Don't, let, don't be put off by that. Don't think, oh, I've failed. You haven't failed. You've succeeded for a period of time and you've had what's called a relapse. That is perfectly normal and perfectly natural and what we expect to see in the vast majority of cases. Now, how can Ramadan help us in this? How is that something we can use to help stop smoking? Well, think about what everyone else will be doing. Everyone else will be doing the same. So if your friends or family smoke, they will also not be smoking during that period of time. So you have a social group around you who will be doing the same thing, and that will be an added incentive for you to try and continue with that and also help each other to stop smoking. So you can use it either as an encouragement or if you are so minded, if you're a bit more competitive, use it as a competition and say, OK, well, I've stopped and I'm not smoking anymore. How many are you smoking or how far are you towards stopping? So there's two ways we can look at that, either as an encouragement and social support or using it as a bit of a competition. Obviously, think about the people you're doing it with. If they're not that competitive, then use it more as a social support. So these are some really useful tips and techniques that will hopefully help smokers to set a date. So the first thing is set the date for your quit, quit time. So whether that's first of Ramadan or before Ramadan, but you have a definite time in the calendar. The month of Ramadan is coming and you know that's the time I'm going to aim to try and stop smoking. And then the social support, the support of peers, friends and family, that again is another massive incentive for you to try and stop smoking. Now what I have seen is when the fast ends, instead of unfortunately having something to eat or drink, often the smokers in the community will go outside and have a cigarette. Now that is not going to help you if you, if you do that, but what you can try and do is instead of having a cigarette, try and occupy yourself in some other way. So have a small snack, have a drink, uh, have, some, have some way to distract yourself because if you then the first thing that you do after you break the fast is have a cigarette, then obviously you're going to increase the craving and increase your desire to have more cigarettes. So try to not indulge in that habit. I understand obviously it may be difficult and if you do slip back a few times that's perfectly fine, but try to establish the habit of doing something else other than having a cigarette as soon as the fast ends. So these are some really useful behavioural techniques that we can employ. There are other things that can help you in terms of trying to quit smoking. So for example, there are mother, other methods of nicotine replacement. So there's nicotine gum, uh, nicotine patches, nicotine, uh, what we call a little inhalator, which looks like a cigarette, but it's a little plastic tube that has nicotine and you can use that instead of a cigarette. So if you are thinking about stopping smoking, do speak to your GP, do go and see your doctor and ask them about these nicotine replacement therapies. So these are very helpful and much better than actually smoking. And this might be something, so as we talked about, having the cigarette when you break the fast, instead of that, have this little small plastic inhalator. Use that when you're breaking the fast so that you deal with the craving, but you're not having a cigarette. So this little nicotine replacement tube, uh, the patches, the gum, these are all really useful techniques and things that you can get from your GP on prescription. So please do ask your doctor and they will be happy to help you because smoking is a very harmful habit and it's not good for your health. So I'd just like to take a little time to talk about some of the ill effects of smoking on the body. So the one that everyone knows about is obviously lung cancer. That is a huge adverse effect of smoking. The, the cigarette, tar, nicotine, all of these harmful substances, carbon monoxide, these are all very detrimental to your health and particularly your lungs. And the biggest one that everyone is aware of, it's written on the cigarette packets in large writing, cigarettes can harm your health. So lung cancer is obviously a big problem with smoking. However, there are a number of other problems that people may not be aware of. So for example, it can make heart disease worse. So things like angina, heart attack, all of these are related with smoking the uh, developing of strokes. So really serious and significant medical problems can be associated with smoking. So it's not a small issue. There are really serious adverse effects from cigarettes. So heart disease, lung disease, strokes,
but also other things. So, for example, it can affect your circulation generally. So people sometimes who smoke a lot develop what's called intermittent claudication. Now, what this means is they develop pain in the back of their leg, cramping and discomfort when they're walking. And this is because of the circulation in their legs is poorly affected. And this is directly related to smoking. There is very little else that causes this problem. So causes you pain and cramping in the legs and then you find the distance that you can walk becomes less and less. So initially you may be able to walk 500 yards and have to stop. Then over a period of time, if you keep smoking, it may become 200 yards then 100 yards. And eventually what will happen is the circulation in the legs will become so bad that it may end up in you having to have a bypass in the, in the arteries in the leg. And God forbid, uh, so I have seen patients who have had to have amputations both below the knee and above the knee, which is a serious complication. And I'm sure none of us would want to have to suffer these problems as a result of smoking. So we talked about heart disease, lung disease, circulatory problems, stroke. All of these things are associated with smoking and they can be easily minimized, if not eliminated, by just simply trying to stop smoking. So Ramadan is a great opportunity to try and use that time to cut down smoking and ideally stop. So if we can't stop, then at least you can try and cut down the amount of cigarettes and then use the month, the month, two months, three months after that to continue your trend and continue to try and decrease your cigarette smoking. Okay, so in addition to nicotine replacement, there are a number of medications that can be prescribed that help people stop smoking. So there's a drug called Zyban, which is a very effective drug. And often this can be used in combination with nicotine replacement. And studies have shown that using both of these together, both the nicotine replacement and this medication, decreases the uh, smoking and helps people quit more effectively. So again, there are medications that you can ask your doctor about that can be prescribed. And these are very effective and useful in terms of trying to stop smoking. Okay, so talking about smoking, this is a very bad habit and obviously has serious adverse effects on your health and we can try and use this opportunity of Ramadan to help us cut down and ideally quit and stop smoking altogether. Also another thing that people may may not consider but those who are smokers is the social effects of smoking. So in the past when people when smoking was allowed in public places there was a lot of effect on others in terms of what we call passive smoking. So nowadays, in public places, smoking is not permitted and the government have made steps to decrease the smoking in, in public places on public transport. So when you're out and about, people often are less happy when, there's, when others around them are smoking. So by hoping to trying to stop, you may find that your interaction with others becomes a more pleasant experience and they are less likely to complain if you are out in a restaurant outside or sitting in the park and, and you're sitting and talking with friends, you may find they're more likely to spend time with you. So that's again another advantage that perhaps may not be obvious immediately, but something that will be hopefully helpful in terms of you being able to stop smoking. Okay, so we've talked about smoking a little bit and how we can use Ramadan to try and help quit. I want to talk briefly about uh, taking of medications during fasting. So we've mentioned in previous episodes about chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease and so on. So often people may be on a number of medications and these may be important for them to take for their health. So it's important to think about the medications that you take and what they're needed for and when in the day you have to take them. So for example, people who have high cholesterol may often be on what's called a statin drug and this has to be taken at night. So they take the statin drug at night uh, just before they go to bed so this is something that you need to think about and think, how can I time this with my fasting? Other drugs need to be taken during the daytime. So for example, blood pressure drugs or drugs for other conditions, these may need to be taken during the day. So it's important to talk to your GP or doctor about how you might take your medication and if you can take them at various times. Sometimes as with the statin drugs, it's not possible to take them at another time, but sometimes it may be possible to take them earlier or later or combined medications. So this is an important thing for those with chronic health conditions who are on regular medications to think about and discuss with their healthcare professional 
and how to maximize their health whilst also carrying out their fasts. So we've talked about today smoking and very briefly medications for long-term health conditions. I hope that this episode has been useful for you and I hope you can join us in future episodes when we'll be talking about other issues related to health and fasting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.